Around the world, we have seen many central banks begin to either reduce their money printing or say that they will tighten at some point in the near future. This coincides perfectly with the decline in stocks around the world. We can definitely see that without the assurance that central banks will continue to print, stocks will fall. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we are going to look at what has been happening ever since late January. We have seen turmoil in the markets. I want to begin by showing you this chart here. Everything was just fine all throughout 2017. You could see that we had the stocks rising and rising and rising until we got to this moment right here. And of course, the trigger for this event was the VIX. Everybody knows that. And since then, we have seen US stocks trading within a range. Depending on the day, it's very volatile as we have seen. Up 300 points one day, down 300 points the next, and so on. You compare this to world stocks excluding the US, again, all of the stocks were rising, just like US stocks. But since that moment, we have seen world stocks declining, the so-called too big to fail banks declining even more. In fact, these are actually in a bear market. If you've been following my channel, you would know these are now in a bear market. The two big to fail banks, the most critical institutions, are now in a bear market. We'll see how they've turned that around. China is in the same mess. I just showed you. Earlier today, I did a video showing how China is affected by what is happening. We're looking at their market coming down 21%. They may change that, that's for sure. But it's going to have to require a lot of central bank easing in order to push it up 20%. Moving on. This is from a report from the IMF. I took this particular chart out of it. Margin debt. I mean, I can't believe, every time I look at this, it gets more and more and more dangerous. Margin debt. The amount that people have been buying with margin is extraordinary. Since the financial crisis, none of that stopped. We've been told that they've put all these protections in place. We've been told lies before. The only difference is that some people believe it and some people want to know the truth. If you watch this channel often, I'm thinking you probably want to know the truth. Take a look at that. I know people who have used margin personally. They say it's a great idea. But of course, it only works on the way up. As soon as the market starts to come down just a little bit, you'll be getting your margin calls, I assure you. But of course, the market always goes up, so there's nothing to worry about. Crazy stocks, S&P 500 poised for second most volatile year outside of bear markets. Think about this. We are experiencing high levels of volatility right now, not in the VIX. The VIX doesn't show that. However, actual volatility in the market, the market movement, is the second most volatile year outside of bear markets. You get that in a bear market. Is that telling us? Is that foreshadowing what's to come? Or is this going to change and we won't see anything you know, the next little while. I'm, I'm seeing this. I'm seeing the volatility taking place in bear market years. If you look at these charts here. During those bear market years, they're volatile. Things are moving up and down, up and down. And during these positive, strong times, 
we have less volatility. It's a pretty simple thing. So what's going on here? Are we foreshadowing or are we about to reverse course and go back to steady and stable like 20, 2017? It's interesting. Emerging markets right here are really, really suffering. I mean, I've covered this here, obviously, but since that same time frame, right around January or so, the markets have all been coming down, no matter which one you're looking at here. It's just showing you various different ways to look at it. But ultimately, it's it's funny because you can see how the markets move in lockstep for the most part. And then they start to get a little haywire in the middle of 2017. But at that same time frame, everything fell. Okay, so depending on where it was, it fell from there. It's interesting how the markets are really, really working in lockstep. S&P value versus growth. Haven't been this bad since the year 2000. Far, far surpassed what we had seen during 2008. And why? People at this time... They want more and more profit. They are unwilling to go to the bank and get that maybe 1% on their savings account. It's just not enough. It's not going to keep up with inflation. So maybe they want to get something more secure. So they're looking at maybe that 2 to 3% range. Still not keeping up with inflation. So we can get into some stocks. Okay. But if we do get into stocks and we're taking a risk, we need to put it into the stocks that, number one, people know about. That's what your financial advisor generally does. They put it into the household names, but the ones that have been generating the most profits. Why? Because they want to be able to obviously look good for you it's not about keeping money necessarily it's about taking that risk so they put it into the stocks you've been seeing growing and growing and growing however when we go away from those staples from those big names who have been giving dividends for a hundred years and who have been around for the longest period of time and they've shown their strength in the economy and that during the recessions they did reasonably well, still had sales happening and revenue was okay and they didn't you know, have to fire half of their workforce and so on. We don't go towards that. We go towards where is the performance today, and that's what financial advisors have done, and that's what they're doing now. And of course, that becomes a problem as time goes on. Very quickly, two charts, Dow Jones Industrial Average. Look at where it is. It has gone here up until you know this time frame after the financial crisis. The Dow Jones just shoots up. However, U.S. durable goods orders have been flatlined for years, for years. Looking at this here, you could see that we are down here month over month on the durable orders going here uh, twice in a row. So if that trend continues, it's gonna be a big problem for sure. We need to have a real economy. We need imports, we need exports. We need to have jobs that are created and get that economy going. We can't have a standstill. We can't have this stall because there's only so much uh, quantitative easing that the central bank is willing to do at this time. And that really doesn't get the economy going anyway. It just gets the stocks to be pumped up. All right. U.S. home builder stocks, I just want you to focus on the green line here, have also declined in this global catastrophe that's occurring right here, all in January, all because of that VIX that really started it all. But it's not just the VIX, because that's just one trade. What's going on underneath? The weakness is truly present. Looking at oil prices right now, the WTI is just under 73. Brent 
is just over 77. We can see that this has really been climbing now. It went from, let's say, $30 a barrel, was trading in that $40 range for the longest time, then it was $50, and I would say from that $50 point to the $70 point, it really happened very quickly. That's obviously put a bigger burden on people at the gas pumps. It has really increased for a lot of people. I know myself, it definitely uh, made a major difference. I'm noticing it. And then last but not least, looking at China's currency, they have been, I don't want to necessarily say suffer because it could be good on their part. However, the devaluation is clearly present. You could see that as of not quite that same time frame, but as of the peak would be in March, here end of March, it has rapidly, rapidly declining in just the last few days. In fact, it's been dropping like crazy. This here could be beneficial for exports. We always need to remember that. So I'll leave you with this. If you found the video informative, please give me a thumbs up. This was the chart GPS, and I hope you do like these. I try to bring as many charts as possible because, as they say, a picture is worth a thousand words, and I talk enough as it is. All right. If you want the financial education that you were not taught in schools intentionally, then these two books have it all. In these two books, you get everything you need to know that will get you started. I got the foundation, I got investments, the four asset classes, how to make money, how to profit, when to you know, look at certain assets. We're always on the lookout. We're always trying to become aware of our surroundings, and that means physically where we live and so on, but also in terms of assets, in terms of our investments. So when you read these two books, which by the way, fit into each other like puzzle pieces, you get familiar topics, but they sort of fill in the blanks for each other, you're gonna know what to do if you wanna take your information to your financial advisor. If you do that, you'll make educated decisions instead of just relying on them. So if you wanna check them out, links are in the description of this video. If you prefer the audiobook version, you can get that at themoneygps.com.